If you don't believe the first chapters of Scripture are to be taken literally, where does your where does your common where do you sense understanding? Line? Yeah, where do you start? Uh, you know, and I have to confess, I've listened to the arguments that. Well, the first 11 chapters, it's really not historical narrative. Well, wait a second. Where did, why did the, suddenly chapter 12? Urgh. Phil Johnson responding to Nicholas Kristoff's questions to William Lane Craig. We've got enough names floating around here. I'm glad you don't have a middle name. This would make it very difficult. He was asked, was Jesus really born to a virgin? I will share with you. I'm not trying to take him out of context, but I'm just grabbing the things that I thought were kind of eyebrow raising. Question, are you actually confident that Jesus was born to a a virgin? William Lane Craig says, I'm reasonably confident. Wow. Yeah. That's disturbing. That is just disturbing. Why? Well, because we have a more sure word of prophecy. Peter's saying it's more sure than his personal experience. Uh, When he was on the Mount of Transfiguration, the most spectacular thing he ever saw with his own eyes, the glory of Christ unveiled, and he describes that event, and then he says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. Something even better than a sign. And he's talking about the scriptures. So if the scriptures say it, I'm more sure of that than I am any any other facts I know. Here's here's where I think that comes from. I've seen Christian philosophers. I'm always a little bit leery of yeah. putting those two words together. Same here. Because the philosophy tends to overshadow the Christianity. Yeah. And so from a logic and reasoning standpoint, it's logical and reasonable to conclude that this could happen. So yeah. I'm reasonably certain but that's not a Christian response. No, it's not. And uh, I'm absolutely certain. Yeah. I'm totally certain. Yeah. I'm busy. If God can create a universe, he can deliver his son through a woman's womb. Not a big deal. Right. Okay. All right. This is the question. You don't believe the Genesis account that the world was created in six days or that Eve was made from Adam's rib, do you? If the Hebrew Bible stories need not be taken literally, why not also accept the New Testament writers took liberties? That's a very perceptive question, and that, that is the problem with abandoning six-day creation and uh, you know the 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 story that Adam was uh, a historical person as opposed to some figurative creature, you know, that Scripture uses in a poetic fashion. If you don't believe the first chapters of Scripture are to be taken literally. Where does your where does your common do you sense understanding? Line? Yeah, where do you start? Uh, you know, and I, I have to confess, I've listened to the arguments that, well, the first eleven chapters, it's really not historical narrative. Well, wait a second, where did why did the suddenly chapter twelve? Yeah. Now and now we're going to start actually telling you the details and everything about those first eleven chapters is historical. Yeah, narrative. I I think people who fool around too much with philosophy get the idea that somehow they sacrifice some intellectual credibility if they posit the, the 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 reality of miracles the miracle accounts in scripture so they do the same thing not only with the first 11 chapters of genesis but also with the book of jonah and right. so on and so you on you got to do away with the miraculous right so but you ultimately face the question then in the virgin birth and all that what do you do when you get to the resurrection because Paul is very clear. If Christ didn't rise bodily from the dead, then your faith is vain, and none of this is worth anything. And that's the foundation you lay when you start all the way back in Genesis 1, saying, you know, I don't take this literally, that the Lord really created everything in six days, as if that's too hard for him. Well, besides, if you make your way through even the book of Genesis, all right, were other miraculous events Were those historical narrative? What about the Exodus, the Red Sea? What about Elisha and Elijah and the consuming of the the oxen? Elisha made an axe head float. That's my favorite miracle because it's just... It, it, it's not something you could explain away by any kind of coincidence. So, but what do they do with those if that's actually narrative? But Genesis one through eleven. So they they again yeah. kicking where does the it, can down the where street. Where does it kick in? And 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 he's laying the foundation. Even if, and I don't think William Lane Craig is ever going to you know just flat deny Christ or anything like that. But he is laying the foundation for his disciples to come to the scriptures 
with a skeptical sort of allegorical interpretation and there well, it's it's the look we're reasonable we reason we're logical people but we don't use reason and logic and we certainly don't have it sit on top of scriptures it serves our understanding of the bible right but it doesn't trump all right this is this is the response to well if you take that genesis figuratively why don't you do that with the new testament answer because the Gospels are a different type of literature than the primeval history of Genesis 1 through 11. Huh. The eminent Assyriologist Thorkild Jacobson describes Genesis 1 through 11 as history clothed in the figurative language of mythology, a genre he dubbed mytho-history. That's his response. It's an arbitrary judgment. I mean, again, he simply made an arbitrary decision to interpret this part of Scripture figuratively and other parts of scripture literally and any other literary critic who wants to try to make the point could say to him no it's there all of the miracles are symbolic in fact you know that's what brought me to christ in the first place i had a pastor in the church i grew up in who was as liberal as the day is long and he didn't believe any of the miracles Mm. in scripture were real he never would have told the congregation that but I had a Sunday school teacher who would tell us, even as early as sixth grade, hey, don't take this literally. This didn't really happen. What's important here is the moral lesson. And I said, you know, you tell us every week, don't believe this bit of the Bible. If it's not true, I don't understand why we have to come on Sunday morning and talk about it. I'd rather stay home and watch the NFL pregame show. Well, and she th- thought I was just being a smart aleck. So she told the pastor, he called me to his office. He, uh, he gave me all these reasons why the miracles in the Bible aren't true. And when I realized this guy doesn't even, and if anybody in that church knew he doesn't believe the be Bible the is door. true. Yeah. He'd be out the door. Now, Phil, is it possible that your response was right, probing, and you were being a smart aleck? Is that possible? Mm, maybe. Timing. All right, here we go. Back <laughs> to the article. How do you account for the many contradictions within the New Testament? There's a loaded question from (laughs) Nicholas Kristof. Yeah, name one. For example, here he's got one. Matthew says, you know, This is going to be Judas hanged himself? Yeah, that's right. And Acts says he burst open. They can't both be right, so why why insist? Yeah, exactly. Why not? The rope Loki fell and busted open. Yeah. Next. Yeah. It says... All of those, all of those supposed contradictions have been answered. I have two or three books in my on my shelf in my office that do nothing but Answer deal the, with those supposed, supposed discrepancies. Yeah. And every one of them can be explained. I know, how many thousands of pages, honestly, have, have there been written in defense of, of things like this? No, in fairness, yeah, it's a like, contradiction, okay, this, contradiction would be if one gospel said Judas hanged himself and the other one said, no, no, he didn't hang himself. He shot himself. Yeah. Uh, okay, not well, probable, but... Right, well, he could hang himself and shoot himself. But if it would have to say, guns. this one says he hanged himself. That one says, no, he didn't. You know, and they have contradictory accounts. Uh, uh, different facts that can be put together and both be true. That's not a proof of contradiction. Oh, and furthermore, if the Gospels, people have a, sometimes struggle with that. Well, what about the, the details and who got and what? I always think, watch your news. Turn on the, the, the one NBC and they're going to tell you that it was a 10-car pileup, and then you turn to ABC, and they say it was a two-car head-on collision. Who was right? Both of them. They were simply wanting to make a different point, right. or they saw the story from a different angle. Yep. Same thing is true with Matthew, Mark, and Luke. Not only that, you watch the news, and every news story I've ever been like part of or close to, when I read it in the newspaper, they always get facts wrong. They always do. Oh, so, uh, yeah, huh. you know, they're loaded with discrepancies if you read just all the various news accounts. Well, have you ever been quoted in a newspaper or yeah. something? Right now? How close to the truth was it? Almost never do they get it right. I know. You, and, you know what? There's there's actually a, now a name for that, the media never getting anything right. This will speed up. Fake the, news? I was going to say CNN. Here's oh. the response. <laughs> Quick. I don't. In, this is the response from William Lane Craig. I don't insist on the inerrancy of Scripture. Rather, I insist is what C.S. Lewis called mere Christianity. That is to say, the core doctrines of Christianity. Well, to paraphrase John Piper, farewell, William. Lane Yikes! Craig. Well, that because look, you don't stand alone on that. The reformers would say if you don't believe in the inerrancy of Scripture, yeah. you have no part of what, Christ. What he's saying is that Scripture isn't authoritative. It really isn't. Uh, he'd, he'd argue, oh, it is in a certain way authoritative, but 
He's not saying that it is the it is the word of God. So if I've got William Lane Craig on my bookshelf, what do I do with him? Well, I have a whole bookshelf of stuff that I wouldn't endorse. Not that, okay, so in other words, I, it's read it to my... understand it if you're up to it, but not a reliable right. source for apologetics. Phil Johnson, grace to you, grace life pulpit timing. Until tomorrow, go serve your king.